schoolgirls in Iran are being poisoned at school. Humanitarian groups believe that this is retaliation from the government from recent protests. Now, girls are unable or afraid to attend school for fear it could happen to them. Hey everybody and welcome to the True Crime Squad. This is Katie Weaver. I'm here with my sister, co-host and partner in crime, Christy Brower. Hello. Hello. Hey everybody. We made it to Tuesday. We did. We are on a roll. <laughs> so welcome to our Tuesday edition. We hope you all are well where you are. I uh, want to let you know we won't have an episode live on Wednesday or we will have our live on Wednesday. We won't have a, an episode, an episode yeah, on Wednesday because Thursday, uh, Christy, you'll be back at court. Yes, I will. The uh, Day Bell Vallo Belligerent Herd Circus marches on and they mm -hmm. have court. We now have Thursday. to call it the Day Bell Vallo True. Belligerent Herd Circus because they're not a joint case anymore. No. Which what that means and what that's going to mean. Dude, I've been a thinking lot. about it ever since that hearing, and I'm still not sure. I know. Lots of wheels turning. Well, I mean, it's actually the Daybell Belligerent Herd Circus and the Vallo Belligerent Herd Circus. And as it stands right now, the Vallo Belligerent Herd Circus is starting in less than a month. Yes, we are headed to court. Trial is happening for Lori. Yes. So that will be the big focus right now, I think. Probably mm -hmm. Chad's stuff will kind of fade off for a while while they're mm -hmm. waiting on maybe DNA. I don't know. Um, but the focus will be on Lori's trial. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why you won't see an episode on Wednesday, but you will see a report sometime probably later in the day on Thursday about what did go down in court. Mm -hmm. I will do a live stream and give you all the details. Excellent. Awesome. Well, that's what's up. So mm -hmm. let's go ahead and dive into Tuesday. Christy, I'm going to kick the mic over to you for our first segment, which is a crime news update. Yes. Well, some positive news in a case that we have been covering from the very beginning. This is Dylan Rounds. Dylan mm -hmm. Rounds is a young man who's actually from our area, but he was living in southern Utah on his own farm, pr preparing his land to plant it when he went missing. Yeah. It's been more than a year, I think, now. Almost a year. Yeah. It's almost a year since Dylan went missing. Um, as you know, lots of very problematic things went on at the very beginning with the police not taking it very seriously and lots of challenges between the parents and the police. And we, <coughs> oh, excuse me, um, we covered all of that. Now, right very near the beginning, Dylan's neighbor was arrested. Mm -hmm. His name is James Brenner. And he was arrested not for Dylan's murder, but for uh, violating laws for owning weapons. And he's, he's a felon. Mm -hmm. He had actually asked a neighbor to hit, hang on to his guns because he was pretty sure they were going to be searching him in Dylan's case. Mm -hmm. And uh, it turns out he shouldn't have had those guns at all because he is, in fact, a felon. Well, bombshell news late to the game i don't know uh this past saturday um box elder county attorney uh the the box elder county attorney's office finally filed criminal charges against james brenner yeah um he's been charged with aggravated murder first degree felony and abuse or desecration of a human body which is a third degree mal uh, th felony for the murder of Dylan Rounds and the yeah. disposal of his body. Now, I will tell you, we don't know where Dylan's body is. No. And maybe they're going to get this now out of him. I don't know. The police are saying that they will have it soon. Yeah. So they, they he's told them. If you'll remember, this is right on the border of Utah and Nevada. This is very desolate. Mm 
mm-hmm. mostly sagebrush kind of land with yeah. mountains and these big deep ravines. Uh, it has been and searched, caves. And searched. A yes, massive cave, cave structure. Yeah. It has been searched on foot. It has been searched by drone, by plane. It has been searched every way you can freaking helicopter, ATV, dogs, yeah. everything with not finding anything. But we've always been not surprised by that because of the terrain and the location. Mm-hmm. This is and just a, the vastness of it. Huge amount of open nothing, mm-hmm. which, you know, on the Idaho, Utah. Uh, line. So, but they think now they know. They mm-hmm. also say that they have a panoramic photo that was taken on Dylan's phone. And it is of Brenner covered in blood. Mm-hmm. And they do have some other forensic evidence as well. And we'll get into that more as things go forward. Mm-hmm. Um, all I have to say is I'm really happy for his family. I spoke with yeah. Dylan's mother on the phone not long after this happened, yeah. uh, as we began covering it. And, you know, she told me then that she knew he was dead. Mm-hmm. She knew from the very beginning that we're, this is a, this is a, um, a death uh, investigation. Yeah, yeah. But she said it was a, a recovery operation. Yeah. She knew from the beginning they were looking for his body, yeah. but to know now for sure, I, that's got to be devastating for her and Dylan's dad and the rest of their family. Yeah. Just really lots of love out to them. But I am pleased at least that they're starting to get some justice here. Yeah. Brenner is in, is was already incarcerated, but he is now going to be for a lot longer uh, facing these uh, charges. Mm-hmm. And we should be learning more pretty soon, especially once they find his body. Yeah. So we will keep you updated on that case. Yeah. Big news there. Very much so. And with that, Katie, I'm going to kick the mic back to you for our main case. Okay. This case really qualifies as international crime and also crimes against women uh, and crimes against humanity. But, uh, and that's why I'm covering it. It's not a long case. I don't have a lot to share with you, but I feel like we need to have as much uh, exposure on this as possible. The world needs to know what's happening. So what's happening in Iran, Iranian children go to separate schools. And in Iran, actually, girls going to school has been encouraged Mm -hmm. and acceptable, uh, even up to university. And, you know, then their rights are very limited in who they can be and what they can do. But they actually are encouraged to get educations. And in fact, the Iranian government has urged other countries like uh, Iraq and Afghanistan to allow girls to go to school. Right. But then last fall, there was the big dust up because there was a woman who was arrested by the morality police, an actual thing, and killed. Not a joke, like we tend to say here in the U.S., but for real. That actually exists. And there were a lot of protests, particularly by younger people, because of that. Because uh, young women and younger men in Iran have had it with the treatment of women. They've absolutely had it. Yeah. Uh, women are very much property and are they live very frightening, I think, existences where one misstep could actually, you know, in this girl's case, kill you. Yeah. You really don't have the right to protest, tell the government uh, what you think or anything. You don't have any rights when those no. things are concerned. So the last few months, something really concerning has been happening. And it started with school lunches. And now it is uh, being perceived to be a gas in the air. But now we're hearing that as many as 30 schools from elementary all the way up now to university uh have been flooded in some way or poisoned in some way and are poisoning these girls. Mm. Uh, One death so far that we know of, an 11-year-old little girl, though uh, the Iranian government is saying, there are no deaths. This is being overplayed, you know. But uh, That's probably the last uh, source I would believe in this situation. mm -hmm. Also, I'm not sure I would believe U.S. media because this has gotten very little play here in the U.S., which I think is disgusting. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, There have been around 1,200 students now that have been poisoned. Uh, They are saying that 
around 35 hospitalized, but we're not positive that that's true. Uh, basically, what uh, this gas is doing, they have they will smell a weird smell in the school, and then girls start feeling like they can't breathe, start feeling faint. The schools essentially will be, uh, you know, evacuated, and everyone's outside gasping for air. There was one case where a whole bunch of girls were taken via ambulance to the hospital at the same time, and there was a big uh, kind of roadblock of cars, a big traffic jam of cars, and there were parents out there physically pushing cars off of the road, forcing them out of the way to let the ambulances through to get their children to the hospital. Yeah. Uh, parents I saw that video. Furious. Parents literally like surrounding a car and picking it up and shoving it out of the yes. way. Yes. Yeah. It's insane. People are furious and they're terrified. terrified. And now there's a big push for girls' schools to be online only mm -hmm. because they're not safe. There's also um, a push to just close girls' schools. And some girls' schools have been closed. But uh, then that takes away yeah. any autonomy they have. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Without a doubt. Uh, we don't know what kind of long-term ramifications could come from this, right. you know, what kind of long-term uh, health injuries that these girls could be receiving. Mm -hmm. The government's response is to uh, stop demonstrating then. Gee, hmm. I wonder who's doing this. Well, this don't worry. Life. They have an answer for that. I'm the sure. answer is that it's extremist groups. And you guys with your little protesting have flared up extremist groups that are now attacking the schools and attacking the girls and just making things worse. So the best thing you could do right now is to stop protesting and start cooperating with the government because obviously, if not, you're going to cause things to just get a whole lot worse. Oh my God, the gaslight. That's the answer. That's the answer. It is an extremist group. The government is an extremist group this is christ yeah absolutely now and also of course the government is saying that the poisoning is mild but it's not mild uh it's, it's poisoning happening. it's poisoning yeah there's no my oh it's just it's just a mild poisoning we're not even going to charge him for that yeah what no <laughs> poisoning is poisoning holy shit yeah and yeah you're right what have they been exposed to yeah. And what's it going to do to them in the long run? Mm hmm God. Yep. Yep. So, you know, all women wanted in the fall when all of this flared up was some freedom of clothing. Yeah. And now they're fighting for freedom for their girls to go to school without being poisoned. I mean, it's just, it's astonishing to me that these things even happen. And the way the hold on the people, you know, to gaslight them into believing that, uh, not even just believing, but just understanding that you, we better knock it off or this is going to just keep getting worse. You get in line. Pretending that it's extremist groups, mm -hmm. you know, rather than who it obviously is. Uh, creating this and creating more fear, more confusion, and taking more rights from girls yep. than women. God almighty. Yep. So that's what I have. It's, it's not a long story, but it's a story that absolutely must be told. Please keep an eye on it. I will tell you the place that this is getting the absolute most coverage is TikTok. Yes, it's all over TikTok. I, this is how I learned about this going on. I have watched a million TikToks, uh, really good footage that, that are being taken and shared at great personal risk yeah. uh, that uh, people in Iran want the world to know that this is happening. And okay. well, really, the whole pay attention, all of the protesting, everything really is only getting any good play on TikTok. Yeah. Yeah, TikTok has by far been the best place to learn more about what's going on with this stuff, which is insanity. Why, why uh, governments want to um, shutter TikTok or limit TikTok? This yeah. is why. Mm -hmm. This connects people globally immediately. 
and yep. people can show exactly what's happening in their communities. Yep. And then people all over the world can see it. Yep. And, and react and demand accountability and be aware. And governments don't really like that, including our own. Yep. Here in the U.S. So, yeah. And the attacks on TikTok, I mean, continue. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, in Idaho and Montana, you can't uh, access TikTok through any state uh, device. At my daughter's college school, their uh, Wi-Fi blocks TikTok now. Yep. Yeah, a so, lot of universities have. Mm -hmm. With the state blocking them is the state has blocked all social media for years. This is mm -hmm. just them coming out and saying something that was already true. Like my wife has a state phone and a state computer. Uh -huh. She can't download apps like that on those phone, on those um, mm -hmm. devices anyway. Uh huh. Interesting. Um, but the university's blocking it off their Wi-Fi. I think that's really scary. I do too. Yeah, There's the kids at her school have been furious. Fear about of it. us being spied upon. Uh, give me a mm -hmm. fucking break. We're already spied upon upon every single day in every way. Yeah. TikTok is not the problem. No. But limiting TikTok to people who don't have data on their mm -hmm. phones means limiting witnesses and mm -hmm. limiting reports mm -hmm. of inappropriate behavior. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. What's really true, I think, here in the U.S. is the politicians don't like the way TikTok has the potential of swaying elections, of swaying public opinion, particularly among Gen Z, who politicians tend to be a bit terrified of, mm -hmm. you know, and that's probably a whole nother conversation for another day. However, if you're interested in what's going on in Iran, TikTok is a super good source for that. It sure is. Yeah. Yep. All righty. Well, I'm going to kick the mic back over to you for our last segment, which is another crime news update. Yes, it is. Well, you know, when you put somebody away, you kind of hope they're just going to stay that way. Y'all remember Oscar Pistorius? Pistorius, sorry. No. The Paralympian. He was known as the Blade Runner. Oh, okay. He has those, those blade prosthetics. Mm -hmm. uh, and he shot and killed his girlfriend, Reva Steenkamp. Oh, gosh. And this was, um, so let's see. He's been in jail since 2023. Or no, I mean 2013 for that murder. Mm -hmm. um, but he was originally only convicted of culpable homicide in 2014 and he served one year in prison for that mm -hmm. because what happened is he shot her through a door and he said that he thought she was an intruder uh -huh. lots of evidence came out that that was total bullshit and that he shot her on purpose uh -huh. so prosecutors in a higher court appealed when he was being released and he was tried again in 2015 and found guilty of murder that okay. raised his sentence to six years. And ultimately in 2017, he was um, sentenced to 13 years and five months mm -hmm. because prosecutors went back to the courts and said, this is not a strong enough sentence for what he did. This was intentional yeah. homicide. This is all in South Africa, right? Right. But I'm sure he was an Olympian and a Paralympian. Everybody knew who he was. Right. This was a big deal mm -hmm. back when it happened. Yeah. Well, good old Oscar has served half of his sentence, which means, or more than half of his sentence, which means that he has the possibility of parole. Oh. Yeah. Coming right up. So, you know, there's a lot of concern around it. The hearing will be on the 31st of March, so it's coming right up. Uh, they did talk with... Um, Steen Camp's parents about it, mm -hmm. I guess, is a part of the parole process. Pistorius actually had to speak with her father, Barry, while he was in prison last year, asking for forgiveness. It's something he has to do to qualify for a parole hearing. Wow. Which I think is interesting, but also like, wow, I bet that was real sincere. Right. Um, do you know that in 2014, Pistorius offered her parents $34,000? What? To just make up for, you know, accidentally killing their daughter. Mm -hmm. They did not take it. Called it blood money, of course. 
both parents are basically saying, we don't have any control or any say in this. This is how the law works here. So, you know, we don't, they don't get to speak or, you know, mm -hmm. give any kind of testimony or anything. And so they're like, well, we're just pretty much resigned to whatever happens is whatever happens because this is the law and there's nothing we can do about it. Yeah. Wow. So I think we all kind of hope he doesn't get out because it doesn't yeah. seem like nearly long enough for the murder he committed and all the lies afterward. And just, yeah. you know, he was a, a wealthy, influ influential person right? who tried to use that to get away with murder, which is just disgusting. I don't care who you are. Yeah. Alec Murdoch, anyone? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. All so righty. That's what I know. Well, okay then. Well, now you know what you know. Uh, <laughs> thanks so much for being here. We'll be back on Wednesday night for Wednesday night case updates. And then, of course, Christy will be live booking or live tweeting uh, her stint uh, to De Belvalo Court on mm -hmm. Thursday morning over in our Facebook group, which is the True Crime Squad discussion group on Facebook. And then she'll be back later in the afternoon on Thursday with a live stream to tell you all about it. So yes, I will. It's sure to be interesting. Everything is right now. We're waiting for some filings. We're watching for some filings from Archibald, who promised that he was going to be filing to throw out some evidence. Motion and limiting to get rid of that evidence that came in late. Yep. So we'll see what the judge says there. Well, you know, uh, the judge pretty well sided with him in the last hearing. Mm -hmm. Yep. And, and kind However, of admonished the prosecutor over it. So he did, though I would be surprised to see him throw that evidence out. I don't think it's significant evidence anyway. But the truth is they mm -hmm. filed it the day after it was due. It was a stupid conversation between, you said it was due by the 27th. And he said, no, I would said it was due before the 27th. So they filed it on the 27th. Yeah. Is he really going to exclude that? Uh, I seriously doubt it. But, not, but he did point out to the prosecutor, mm -hmm. it's certainly her job to read <laughs> these yeah. findings and understand yeah. the deadlines, which I thought was pretty interesting. And it is. Yeah. And honestly, we would like them to quit screwing up now. If this is getting to be ridiculous, it was, it's old. Mm -hmm. It is. Yeah. All righty. Well, there you have it. So you guys, please have a good day. Do something good for yourselves. You know mm -hmm. you deserve it. This has been yet another production of the True Crime Squad. Bye, everybody. Mm -hmm.